Good morning, baseball fans, and welcome back to Dan's Vintage Baseball PC. Do not be fooled by the fancy name. It's just me and some friends talking about baseball cards. And uh, happy to be back. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, took off the weekend after Thanksgiving, and uh, I missed it. So happy to be back. I'm also really happy to have a special guest today. Um, today's show is about a baseball player who, for about four years in the mid-60s, was the toast of the town of Boston, and whose career started off with such a bang that he was expected to be, ultimately, some people thought maybe even as good as Ted Williams. But at this point, um, we'll get into the bio of Tony Canigliaro. Tony C., as he was known in Boston, uh, was born in the Boston area. I think he was born in Salem or, or Revere, uh, one of the northeast suburbs, and went to school in Lynn, high school in Lynn, and was drafted uh, or signed uh, directly out of high school by the Red Sox. Um, went into the minors and absolutely ripped it up uh, and debuted in a s spring of 1964, barely 19 years old. And if we look at his numbers, you can see right off the bat, 19 years old in 1964, hit 24 home runs, did not even get any votes for the uh, Rookie of the Year that year because I looked it up and uh, Tony Oliva was the Rookie of the Year, won the batting crown. Um, and he didn't finish second because second was Wally Bunker, who was a pitcher for the Orioles who won 19 games that year. So uh, Tony C. has a terrific year as a 19-year-old. As a 20-year-old, hits 32 home runs, which leads the league, um, garners some MVP votes, and uh, at this point is on top of the world. Um, 66, he has another phenomenal year, uh, garners MVP votes, and then we come to the magical season of 1967, which wasn't particularly ultimately uh, magical for Tony C. Uh, again, gets off to a great start. He, he's an all-star. Uh, the Red Sox are flying. Um, by mid-August, they're uh, knocking on the door of first place in a crazy four-team race. 1967 is known as the impossible dream. And so, unfortunately, in, uh, I believe it's April 18th, my guest will check me out on this, uh, Tony C is hit in the eye by a pitch by Angels right-hander Jack Hamilton, and it's such a serious injury that it literally knocks him out for the rest of the season. He doesn't appear uh, again until 1969. Uh, 69, he makes a, a terrific comeback. Uh, he has his best season as a 25-year-old in 1970. As you can see, 36 home runs, 116 RBIs, 266. But at this point, um, problems start to 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 crop up in terms of him being able to use the injured eye and his vision problems uh, create a situation where he's just not going to be able to play anymore. Red Sox trade him in a, a trade we'll talk about uh, later on to the Angels. He spends less than half a season with the Angels and retires. Uh, Tony C. got into media. Uh, he was an announcer both in, in uh, the West Coast and on the East Coast. In 1975, at the age of 30, he decided to make a comeback and had a terrific spring, came back, um, just really couldn't hit very well. And in 1975, ultimately, he retires. Um, we'll talk about his post-career uh, after 1975. But sadly, Tony C. had a heart attack in the early 80s, uh, was diminished in his uh, ability to do much. Uh, and he died uh, at a very young age, I believe 40 years old, um, not, not even 40 years old, in 1990. Um, so let me bring on my guest who knows a lot of this, um, and who has a phenomenal collection of Tony C stuff, but let me show you first the reason why I decided to do this episode was as you, as, uh, readers know, we, uh, readers, <laughs> viewers know, um, I collect the 1970 top set, uh, in autographs. I have the complete set, but I substitute in autograph copies, um, for every card and I'm up to about 350. And uh, Tony C., as somebody who passed away very young in life, doesn't have many cards uh, from the 1970 season that are autographed. So this is a little tough to get. 
Um, and I got a terrific deal on it from the um, Collector Connection auction. Uh, I see the price I paid versus the prices that you'd have to pay to get one of these on eBay, and I'm pretty happy about it. So there's my Tony C autograph. Um, here is the actual card. There's the actual card, CAS. Uh, it's in a ballpoint pen, which is the way they used to sign back in the pre-Sharpie days. But uh, so let's bring on um, Mark. It is wonderful to have you as a guest. Um, the funny part about it is you were the first person I thought of when I got this autograph, because I know you're the guy on Twitter who tags everything with the impossible dream, the 1967 yeah. Red Sox season. So I thought about you, and I'm so happy to have you on, because then you sent me all your Tony C stuff, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> so much. What I sent so, you was just a drop in the bucket. I had to kind of narrow it down to some cool stuff, so... <laughs> Yeah, we only have however, you know, however long this goes, 30, 40, yeah. 50, 60 minutes, however long we go, we only have a certain amount of time in life to go so through I, these things. I tried to pick out some of the cooler stuff, some of the more unique stuff. Uh, it is, to that Tony C autograph, those are tough. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Even around I, uh, here where I live, I have, I think I have five of them and they're, they're tough to get. They're tough. So do you, do you have the 71? I don't have the 70 autograph, no. Ah, you see, I, I no. got you. <laughs> the thing, I'm not a huge autograph guy, uh, mm -hmm. but if it's somebody that played on that 67 team or one of the Red Sox guys from my youth, anywhere from 70 to 75, if I see an autograph, I'll grab it. Um, but I yeah. don't actively just go chase them. Um, so but. I wanted to start out by just my usual stuff. Just tell us about your sort of, you know, how you started to get into the hobby, your background, you know, I, I, obviously you're on here for the 67 Red Sox. I called you yep. a possible collector, super, super, uh, possible dream super collector. So that's some of the, some of the background, but let, give me a little more. Uh, well, I am, uh, I think you and I are probably pretty close in age. Uh, the first year I remember collecting is 1970. Um, I did, I must have collected in 69 because I had a bunch of cards from 69 in my collection, flair and top stuff. And I know I never traded. I traded for them. I always just had them. So I must have opened them. Uh, but the first year I actively remember collecting is 70. Um, and that's, I did all four sports when I was a kid. Um, and I was a set collector, uh, which I think a lot of us were back in the day. Mm -hmm. You did. You just opened the packs until you put it, put the set together. Opening like 70, 71, and 72, I had no idea that there was different series, like high numbers, low numbers. I just kept buying packs and packs and packs. I mean, that's probably why I have, you know, 35 Felipe Alou's from 1972. Because you just kept buying them and buying them. Um, it's funny. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I do have two specific memories of knowing there were knowing there were sets. In night, we used to do uh, summers in Cape Cod, and the, the last, late, you know, Labor Day weekend would be the end of that. So yeah. I, I remember coming back Labor Day weekend and being all upset. My mother, and I was like seven years old, my mother's buying me baseball cards to have me shut up in the car and I'm opening up the packs and it's a bunch of guys I've never seen before. Cause I had I, 70, I collected a gazillion cards. Um, but it, so I'm like, Oh, there must be more later series. So yeah. I remember getting them. And then in 72, I remember um, for some reason I used to go and buy um, uh, cello packs in, yep. in like a shopping center near me. And I remember getting all the traded cards and realizing that there was, oh, this is a whole new different, yeah. set of cards. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and, and they actually looked, in 72, they, that last series, they looked different. They looked brighter. Mm -hmm. It was something about them. They just looked different. Um, the, I, I live in a small town half hour south of Boston. Um, the only store in town that really sold cards was the pharmacy in the center of town. And that's where my mother worked. And she was in charge of ordering the candy and the cards. So I would get all my cards there. I would get a discount because she got a discount. Um, the salesman knew that her son collected. So every year, in every sport, I would get a, a wax box of whatever it was. But she never got the seventh series. And occasionally somebody would go to another town and they'd come back with a different pack. And it was like, where did you get those? Mm -hmm. So that night, my dad would be driving me to the next town so I could try to find a couple. <laughs> but <laughs> back then... Uh, 
the Red Sox were what I watched and what I collected. The Bruins were huge back in the early seventies in Boston. Yep. And yep. I'm still a huge Bruins fan. Um, I collect, I collected all four sports as a kid. Uh, and even to this day, with all the success the Pats have had, they're number four on my list as far as Boston. Well, they were, they were number four back when you were a kid, right? The Patriots oh, they were horrible. They yeah. were horrible. Um, uh, the Bruins were the first team that ever won anything. I remember the, the Cups from 70 and 72. Mm-hmm. But the Red Sox, um, 67 was a year. I don't remember it specifically. I remember it talked about. But that was the year that basically turned it around. Um, yep. They were coming off. They hadn't been in the postseason since 46. I mean, back then there was eight and 10 team leagues and you had to win it or you didn't move on. There was no division. Well, there was the, the one game in 48. One day. Yeah. One game yeah. playoff, which if you can count that, I guess. Uh, and, and they were pretty much just a little bit over 500 all through the 50s, even with Ted. And the, the eight years before 67, they were below 500. One, 65, yep. they lost 100 games. They were bad. Yeah. And so, I mean, they kind of turned it around. And then for years as a kid, they had a streak of something like from 67 to the 80s at some point where they, they were at least over 500 every single year. Yeah. They yeah, I saw numerous- the um, – I was looking at the standings because, um, you know, when Tony C. came back in 70, he had a phenomenal year. And I know Yastrzemski also had a phenomenal year in 70. Yeah. And I looked it up, and they, they won, I think, maybe 90 games and came in third, second or third. So they, they yeah, were a good had, team. Yeah. You were dealing with the Orioles then who were, they yeah. were a truck. Right. And even the, the Tigers were good. The Yankees were down at the time. But um, it wasn't easy. You Well, in 70, there was two divisions. So you could uh, – Right. But they, they were in a lot of close pennant races. Um, so, I mean, I – and they, they were good every year as a kid, 25 year right. run or something like that of being over 500 made the world series a few times, you know? Uh, and I, I collected all the way through high school. Um, my mother kept getting cards for me from the store and it went from not just a, a wax box, but I would get a full set. And that happened up until nice. 95. Nice. He, I was out of college. I was raising family. I had kids. She'd bring over a full set because that's what he would do for me. So <laughs> I had a full set. That's a up. that's a great mom. Most moms it threw is. the cards. Well, a great out. salesman. <laughs> the salesman was there for over 25, 30 years. Same guy. Um, I mean, well, what, theoretically, what you're supposed to do when they give you that extra box in the store, if you order enough, you're supposed to put it on the rack and sell it. Yeah. That's how you make a little extra money. He always told her, "Just give these to your son." Nice. So so um so let's let's get into Tony C. I'm going to bring up your uh, the slides, and you uh, – uh, where's my – there we go. So you, you, the first slide is this is the run. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. 64, 5, 6, 7, 68. He has a card he didn't play in 68. Right. There's 69. There's our, our famous 70 card. And then 71 with the Angels with the uh, tops coloring in the hat. Yep. Uh, that's an OPC in the bottom left, right? I just flipped it over, so it's a, the front's the same as the other seventy-one, um, right? And then there's the uh, the leader card. Yeah, RBI leaders. I guess he didn't win home run crown that year. Um, no, I, there's probably another card. I just pulled some of these out. I have I have all my Red Sox team sets in one binder. Then I have a bunch of extras just in another binder. That's all the yeah. guys who played on 67 and they're just kind of all over the place in there. So I just grabbed these. <laughs> no, this out. is, this is pretty much the run. Now he didn't, he yeah. didn't finish. Probably didn't even finish in the top five in home runs in 69. Cause remember 69 is the year that uh, Frank Howard and Killebrew and Reggie all hit like nearly 50. Yeah. Um, that was a good year. And for that, I yeah. think Tony C had 36 that year. So he probably is, he's in the top 10 person probably, but I guess he didn't get a leader card in the 66. There's no leader cards in 66. He would have gotten it for the home run crowd. You know, there might be one. I Maybe I didn't even pull Actually, it. I, I, I know their leader cards in 67 because yeah. I have a Kofax from 67 that I'm I'm, uh, I'm going to get uh, slabbed up. So, all right. So now we're getting into a little bit more here. Um, so you got a slab of the 68. Uh, actually, you got two slabs of the 68. Yeah, there. there's, a, there's a Venezuelan and an Opeche. Okay, that's what it is. All right, I was wondering. Yeah, the Venezuelan is the one in the PS in the C, uh, CSG. I'm sorry, SGC. Yes, yes. 
because you can tell. I pull the those because they're pretty easy to grab. I'm in my room now, and those are actually on display. Um, I actually have the whole complete Red Sox run in OPG. Oh, nice! And I have the entire run of Venezuelan Red Sox as well. Um, wow. Okay, so the bottom right, that '67 that looks trim. That's um, that's a that's a Venezuelan as well. That's a Venezuelan also. All right, yep. and then there's yep. another item. It's uh, just to the top left of the Venezuelan '67. It's like a white um, picture. The one with the little checkerboard on it. Yeah. Oh, uh, that one is a. Uh, that's a '67 punch out. Oh, oh no, no, not the checkerboard. The one next to that, the 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 one in the slab in the PSA slab. Oh, the big slab with the head there. Um, yeah, yeah. That is that's the '64 tops All Star rookie banquet. Okay. Which, that's where the guys went to get their actual rookie cups. They got the cups that right. you see on the trophies. They got those. Yeah. yeah. Top started doing these in 59. They had a banquet. And from 59 to 63, all there was was a program, which I have a couple from other years. In 64, for some reason, they put out like a 32-card set. Um, And Tony C. got one because he was there. This is the header card for it. These are super tough to find. Nice. That's the header card for the set. Um, So MLB put these out? Tops put them out. Oh, Tops put them out. Okay. So this is where they actually got the trophies. So Tony, there's a trophies floating around someplace that Tony C got for yeah. winning the actual uh, the rookie cup on the card that year. Right. I've actually seen one of them. I was at a show one time and Tommy Harper was there. He won a rookie cup in '64. Right. And one of my good buddies who sells a lot of Red Sox stuff said, "Hey, let's go." He's Tommy Harper's selling a lot of his stuff. He's selling it out of his trunk. I get first dibs. Whatever he doesn't sell, I'll you can have the next one. This guy bought the rookie cup. We, I actually saw it. he had it. He sold it. Nice. So they're out there. And the other two cards just next to that that are the same size, those are all right. from that set. Oh, nice. Um, There's one with the a one bunch of pictures. Like the one pictures. with a bunch of pictures, Tony sees in it just like a, a photo in the locker room. And the card just to the left of that, that's, I believe, the Red Sox PR guy. And what's on that card is the speech that he told to introduce to Tony C to the audience that night. Oh, nice. So I think the way this worked is whoever was at the show got a package of these cards or one was put on the table for each, and that was it. Um, you don't see many of these out there. Yeah, I mean, your pop, pop report's got to be under 50, right? I think it's way less than that. I, wow. I don't have, I don't subscribe to it. At one point when I posted that Tony C, somebody put, wrote back to me, the pop report on this is six. <laughs> And I don't, I don't even remember what that's graded. It's a pretty decent grade, too. So, <laughs> You know, when your pop report is six and it looks like that, it doesn't really matter what the grade is. Yeah, so. I mean, I, if it's a three or an eight, it doesn't really. Well, if it's an eight, you're probably you, you, you're talking about an expensive item. But yeah. uh, you're talking about this, an expensive item anyway. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought that years ago. A lot of yep. the Tony C stuff you see on here, I bought from one guy who had a connection to Tony C from his hometown. He's not around anymore, so that's dried up. But that's where I got a lot of this. Same guy. Nice. So I know he went to high school in Lynn. Um, I thought he was born in Salem, but uh, they say uh, um, baseball references Revere. So, I mean, it's all the same general area. It's all right in that same little area. Um, I think he even went to... I think he played his little league in, like, East Boston, too, for a while. Oh, that's so, right, yeah. That's right. I, I mean, he was a protege from he. I mean, he the guy hit like six hundred in high school. He was, yeah. and this was before the draft. So, and he was um, also a pitcher too, right? He pitched and played shortstop in high school. Yeah. yeah, my father was born in East Boston, so I have a connection. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so the f- bottom left is that classic photo that you see a million times, but that's what kind of what kind of card is that in the slab there? Oh, the bottom left. That's from the. It's from a set put out by Playboy Press, I believe. I can't read it. Seventy-five or seventy-six. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then, go ahead. It, it's there's a it's a twelve card set, and it's like I think it's called "Who Was Harry Steinfeld." <laughs> I, I think Harry Steinfeld was the third baseman and Tinker to Everest a Chance, wasn't he? Exactly. I think so. Yeah. Yes, 
I have this. It, I have it's one just a quirky videos. set, and yeah. I, I have a couple of those. Um, oh, that's funny. Yeah. And then it's the tops, weird, weird you, you, you put three cards from that 1965 set in yep. the top middle. This is a salesman sample. Okay. So this is the front of it, which that's what you see there. And this is the back. Nice. Um, super tough to find again. Um, yeah. A lot of times you'll see these cut into individual cards to find it all as one big panel. Right. It's a little, little tricky. Um, I saw, I saw, a I went to the Philly show. In fact, I got back late last night um, and I saw a panel from a set. And I think not, not 65, it was like a 50 set. And I think it was like five grand or something. So, <laughs> I, I, I didn't pay that for that, believe me. And it was, it was slabbed up. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move on. Uh, now we got a bunch of photos. These are all the good photos. We'll get to the photos, a couple of photos later that um, we'll talk about. Um, yeah. These are mostly the top rows team issue, or the, the two on the left. Uh, I think one, that's the 64, the black and white, the bigger one. Uh -huh. The one just in the middle there, that's a set that came out in 67 at the beginning of the year. Uh, the center one colored on the bottom, that's a team set. Uh, I believe that might be from 70, a postcard set. Uh, a and couple of those are, I think they're homemade postcards. Yeah, the one that's like art on the top right. Yeah, I, I'm not sure on the story on that one. Um, I, I've, no, I've tried to research the artist. Uh, I bought that off the guy that I bought a lot of my Tony C, uh, Tony C stuff. He didn't right. really know where it came from. It could have been uh, like the the original drawing of the proof for uh, like the Boston Globe and the Boston Herald used to run baseball cartoons quite a bit. Right. But we're thinking that's what it is. Uh, yeah. I haven't been able to pinpoint the actual. Uh, I have a lot of the cutouts from the Globe and the Herald, but I haven't been able to find that one. So. The um, the yeah, next yeah. so we so here we have oh there is a sixty six leaders card, there it is yeah, oh that's yeah that's I just didn't pull the regular one yeah, and then there's a three three a nineteen sixty seven three person card there, which I'm that un, is that was made by Bob Lemke I don't know if you remember yeah. Bob he used to be the one of the guys behind the uh, the vintage catalog. Uh -huh. And he did some great custom cards. There's actually a write-up on the back, and that's one of his customs. He passed yeah. away about seven or eight years ago, but he did. He was one of the first guys to do customs, and he did some great stuff. Um, so he did. That's the the starting outfield for '67 right there. Yep. And then you got an auto on the far left. An auto. That's a, a guy, uh, Milberg Cards. He's on Twitter. Andy Woolley, uh -huh. who I've actually met. He's out. He lives out in Michigan. Um, he started doing these and he said, if you give me the Tony C auto, I'll make you a, a, a card for him. Yep. So we did. And if you flip it over, there's actually one of those little things where you can shoot it with your phone and it goes to his baseball reference page. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, so uh, it's cool. Yep. Right. Nice. It's yeah, kind of cool. Good, got yeah. some good friends. And it looks like the upper right, there's like about a half a dozen custom cards there, right? Those are those. Some of those are customs, and some of those are just newer ones that come out. Um, uh -huh. I'm not one of those guys who chases non-playing days cards, even if it's yeah. a guy I collect. A lot of them just show up in my mailbox from various people. Which, if they come to me, I save them. They go into the binder. Um, right. But I don't actively chase these. Um, and the other custom stuff on there, like the two bigger ones in the top left there. Uh -huh. Also by Jeff Jeff Baker from Gypsy Oak. Uh-huh. And I've had him do numerous sets for me. He did a 67 set with the whole team. He's done a 75, a 78, and a 46 set for me. Nice. He just does some great work. So I like to promote those guys. And of course, everybody's favorite cigar box. Of course. He did I a 67 a set for me. He did one for me. And I have to give a shout out to my other buddy. Just to the right of that Tony C autograph is a custom. It looks like a leaf. And that's by John Racanelli. Uh, he's out of Chicago. He goes by P Hitter on Twitter. Uh-huh. Of course. He does he does some great stuff. Um, 
and that's just one of his. I had to throw it in there to give him some props. So, so um, speaking of shout outs at the Philly show, uh, I'm walking down an aisle and all of a sudden I, somebody points to me and says, Hey, <laughs> he didn't remember my name. It was Paul, the gentleman who owns the, the uh, brick and mortar oh, store, in Newport. Paul Borges. Yep. Yep. So, we uh, we hung out for a little bit and talked a lot, and uh, I bought a couple of cards from him. And uh, as you know, both of both you and I are both big fans of both Paul and the shop. His and, shop is really uh, cool. Yeah. yeah, and you know it's one of those shops that's uh, like it's a community thing. You walk in there, yeah. and he's like he, suddenly you're talking to this guy about stuff. And so I wanted to give a shout out to Paul, who also. Um, said he's been watching the videos because i nice. mentioned i mentioned him i guess it was either in the 48 bowman that i did with mark yep, um yep. you did yes you did because i bought a couple of those 48 bowman cards at paul's shop so i've mentioned yep. paul and then somebody who watches my channel went into his store and told him you got to watch these videos and of course he knew me because i've seen you know i've been in his shop several times and it, i've seen yeah, it, you have times. to look for it because it's one street up from the yep. main drag and I did and a little I see brick and mortar. It's place. actually a it's actually a bricks. It's like a red brick store. So it's a anyway, red brick. Shout out to I did, Paul. Who, yes, uh, I think I did some history on that. I th actually think Kurt Berna did too, because Kurt lived in Newport for a while. Oh, okay. Uh, and I believe it used to be a barber shop back in the day. Oh, that's that's funny. what I think we figured out. <laughs> well, but you know, there's cool. a lot of there's a lot of history in Newport. Some of which is family history. My wife's family has quite a few relatives from Newport. So we actually did a bit of a little bit of history hunting on yep. that block. He's on that, I guess, it's, is it spring? It's the next block up from the main block. And we went all the way down looking at stuff because my, like I said, my, my wife's yeah, it, family has yeah, a bunch a nice, of connections there. It, it's so. a crowded town, but it's cool. And you can park downtown and walk up to a shop. So Exactly. So, all right. So we got some posters here. Um, All right, get some cool stuff. Yeah, bottom right uh, looks like a bunch of team members. Is that sixty-seven players? That that is that's such actually a tops issue. Okay, no, that that's called the nineteen sixty-nine tops team posters. Okay, they were folded up, and I I think they were sold individually. Uh, if you unfold those, that's about twelve by seventeen, I believe. So it's big. Yeah. I have a couple of them. I have them framed. I have one on the wall here. Um, those are tough to find, uh, but that's a tops issue from '69. You yeah, don't, you don't I, see those every day. No, yeah, I don't <laughs> see them ever. No. <laughs> and then no. the the testimonial dinner. Now I read no. about the testimonial dinner. Was this after his rookie year? No, this was in '68. '68. So this was. Oh. Okay. And I have it right here. I bought that at auction, and it, it has some water damage to it. And my thought is they they raised money for Jimmy Fund, for the Jimmy Fund. Tony C., this is after he got hit, so they were probably bringing him in uh, for some publicity as well. It was at a restaurant in Framingham, Mass., just, so, just to the west of Boston. Yep. And I'm thinking this is the sign that was on the outside of the building advertising this at the restaurant this is where it's going to be buy your tickets come here for this dinner with tony c spend some money donate to the jimmy fund right i'm thinking there was only one or two of these and one of them's right here yeah yeah so. i mean if if yeah one is probably the only at this point it's probably the only one i mean it has there. water damage that's what leads me to believe it was outside possibly right. in like those little plastic things outside the restaurant um yep but Somebody that's Again. that's a good thing about Twitter. Somebody sees this at an, an out of the way auction, and I get a message: "Hey, did you see this? I thought of you." Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. It's a great group. And then there's a great action photo to the left of that um, that I'm not those familiar with. Th those are those are the '67 to '69 Sports Illustrated posters. Oh, nice. Those are two by three. They were put out over three years. There's one, two, three, four. I have one, two, three. Four. I have seven Red Sox hanging in the room here. Uh, believe it or not, the longer those went on, so the 69s were more rare than the 67s because they put out less and less. My Mike Andrews poster cost twice as much as my Tony C. 
<laughs> doesn't make sense. But um, above that is another sort of team. What looks like a team uh, poster that, there. That's from six. That that was put out later, possibly late seventies, early eighties. Uh, okay. And that was like a reunion for the '67 team. Yeah, it looks like Lonborg, Tony C, and then Yaz. Yeah, the whole team's on there. The, any of the guys that were still alive, um, right? So you could go to this uh, dinner or whatever it was and get this signed. I had a few other ones where they've had other reunions, and what they've done is like they didn't include Tony C on them because he passed away so early. Right. So they didn't even put him on the posters, which kind of pisses me off in a way. Yeah. yeah. Elston Howard didn't get put on because he died early. John Wyatt died early. I put them all on there and. You don't have to, you know, it's, I don't know, but that one has it. And then there's the, what, look, is that a um, Boston Globe cartoon? No, nope, no, nope. that is, that was, that's a 1969 Tasco caricature. <laughs> and they did those for football and baseball. Um, there's six Red Sox. Um, I've seen these out in the wild. Uh, I was actually in Chicago with a bunch of guys and we were at Wrigley, the bar out in behind the outfield and they have the whole Cubs set of these hanging on the wall. Oh, nice. Yeah. You don't see these every day. You really have to search for them. Um, six, 69 Cubs is a heartbreaker six, for them. Yeah. So th yeah. those are called 69 Tasco. Tasco. They actually are checklisted. You can find them on uh, these websites that catalog everything. And then what looks like the upper right is what looks like a bunch of different posters. That is the, well, the Tony C sports illustrated poster that's in the bottom left. Uh -huh. That that's the store display. So you went to that chart and it told you which number to dig out. And Tony C's on that. If you look close, he's the top, he's in the top row, I believe. And Yaz okay. is in the top row as well. So you look at that chart, it tells you which number, and then you reach into the bin and pull the poster out. Nice. So that's the American League. On the other side is the National League. Yeah, I think I see Tommy John in there. I'm not yeah. sure. So that's the whole list of yeah. posters from 67. They added on to this in, in later years, but that's the original poster that you would go into a sporting goods store or Kmart or wherever you bought stuff back in the late 60s. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing the other players in that. I'm going to when, when we get off, I'm going to zoom in on the photo you sent me because, uh, like, I'm looking at it on my iPad and I can't recognize it. Yeah, anymore. I can send you a better <laughs> shot. That's just that. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Oh, here we go. Uh, all right. So, countrywide sports, I see. The 67 uh, action at Fenway. There's a lot of stuff here. Oh, and then, you know, that photo with the, with the eye. Um yeah, I don't know if people can see behind me. That 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 magazine's yeah. framed right in the back up here. Yeah. Okay. Um, what I tried to do is I tried to pick a. I could fill this whole thing up with just magazines or just books or period. I tried to do a little bit of everything here. Um, so some of these are inserts that you would get in the Sunday newspaper. Um, uh huh. You have the sporting news on here. Uh, the yep. American League Red Book, which came out every year. That's the top right. Um, yep. There's a yearbook. That's the bottom right. Uh, Tony C was on a ton of magazines. Uh, yeah. The Red Sox had their own one. That's the top row. Um, I don't know how long that lasted. And I've seen different permutations of that. And I don't really know. That was a little before my time. I don't know how you got those. If you subscribed to it or you bought it at a newsstand. Uh, but they act, the Red Sox had their own newspaper. And that and photograph. Yeah the, yeah, the photograph, photograph. I think that is Yaz. Uh, I can't, I don't remember who's in that. Yaz, yeah. Tony C, and I don't know if that's Reggie Smith. I can't tell. Yeah. I don't know. And then the middle row, the one with the blue on the bottom, that's just, that's like a little booklet that Tony C tells you how to play baseball. So each, <laughs> this, this, it's, it's a little pamphlet and there's two pages on how to hit, how to field, how to throw, how to run the bases. And I think that was put out through an ice cream company. It might, uh -huh. be, might say Brigham's on there, I believe. So I don't know if you had to buy a large cone and you got that, or I don't know how it worked, but it's one of those things when you're browsing late at night on eBay, you come across it and you don't have that. So it's got to come home with me.
It's got to get uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the, the top we left go. photo is the one that breaks my heart. And it's the famous one of him. He's in the hospital at this point. Yes. Yes. And um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the incident because uh, it's, I, I think when I was a kid, you know, I, like I said, if my first year collecting was 70 and Tony C mm -hmm. in 70 was a star. And yeah. so I didn't know about the, the beaning until, you know, I got a little bit older and then, you know, but this was still fresh. This is mid seventies. So I, I was only yeah. a few years yeah. out from it and it was yeah. still a big deal in, in baseball. And so, you know, looking looking back into it, researching for this show, I realized, like, you know, like this is not, this isn't taken as as eventful, I think, as people should, because back then, like I said, it was a big deal, and yeah, this picture it, it, I saw it many many times in the Boston area. Guys of my age, it's the big deal still. It gets talked about yeah. quite a bit. It's it brought up. Um, I think you referenced in the the opening uh, piece that you had, it, it was August 18th. Yeah. Um, All right. Jack Hamilton was on the mound. He was a hard throwing righty. Uh, Tony C was notorious for crowding the plate. Yeah. He stood on the yeah. inside of the plate and he was warned by Ted Williams. You got to back up. He'd already missed numerous times. He'd, he'd broken his arm at least once, maybe twice, broken wrist a couple times, getting hit by pitches. Mm -hmm. He had already missed time earlier in 67 from getting hit by a pitch. Yeah. Uh, Jack Hamilton, he was a hard thrower. And I mean, he didn't purposely hit him, but it just got away from him. Uh, and you see the photo there putting him on the stretcher. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can find articles about this. Tony uh, Rico Petroselli was on deck and he said the sound that he heard when that hit his face, he, he's never heard anything like it. It's like a, yeah. a baseball hitting a grapefruit. And just, yep. and th there's interviews with Tony C. He was, he was conscious through this whole thing. Yeah. And he was, he just did not want to die. He, it was just, as you can see, the whole team is around him right there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty horrific. Um, just reading the different stories about the guys that were there that night that witnessed it in person. It's, it's, it's pretty bad scene. Um, I believe Jack Hamilton contacted Tony C. I don't know if it was in the hospital, but years later. And I, I think, you know, it wasn't a thing he did on purpose, but, he, right. you know, he ruined the guy's career. I mean, he's one of the famous what ifs in baseball, if that didn't oh, happen. Exactly. I mean, the sad part about it, at least in the short term, is that they didn't have really anybody to replace him. That Jose Tartable was playing right field for a while. Jose then, Tartable, uh, they, yeah, they actually, they picked up Jim Landis, who was a yeah. great player for the White Sox, yeah. and he was on the team for a week in 67, yeah. and then when, uh -huh. when Hawk got cut, uh, Harrelson got cut after his blowout with Charlie Finley, yeah. the Sox picked him up, and he had an all right year to finish 67, he had a great year in 68, uh, yeah. 69, but uh, they didn't really have anybody to replace him, no, Tartable and, and Harrelson. Yeah, and I didn't. I looked up a lot of you know who had played, and he mentioned Landis is a game where he shows up. And there's another guy, George Thomas, who played a little George bit. George right Thomas, field. yes, he was on the yeah. team for the whole year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I, I'm thinking to myself, well, what what's going to happen when you get to the World Series? And I think yeah. I didn't actually get time to look through the World Series box scores, but I think Tartable yeah. actually played some some right field. It wasn't only Hawk. It wasn't only Hawk because Hawk didn't really. He played okay. Um, Tottable, Tottable was better, better, you know, fielder. Um, right, and faster. Faster, yeah. He had that famous uh, throw. He threw all Ken Berry at the plate uh, yeah. against Chicago with Elston Howard, and great tag. Um, I actually have that box score from the Sporting News from that year, that game signed by Tottable. Um, yeah, there was a game, um, I guess it was probably early August, where the Red Sox, um, it was a scoreless game into extra innings, and then they gave up a run in the top of the 11th or something, and then Tony C. hit a two-run home run to win the game. Yeah, yeah. And that's the game, 
I guess the the globe the next day. That's where Impossible Dream came from. Yeah, it was, yeah. It's mentioned. Yeah, and then you know they they had that the, the Impossible Dream. It was a. Uh, it came out right around that. It was an album that came out. Mm-hmm. That I believe Ken Coleman narrated it, and uh-huh. he, there's a poem, "The Impossible Dream." That was right. You know, right. That, that album's over on the shelf. I'd play it in the back. I should have played it in the background. My turntable's up here too. <laughs> background music. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, these are these are a little nicer. Um, yeah, those are nicer. You got the bottom one, Ted. That's a, an actual press photo um, uh-huh. with Teddy. Uh, the the colored one's from '65. Uh, right. That's a uh, uh, team issue, like photo pack. Well, and, it's, uh, fun, it's funny that Teddy's in there because um, I did see a quote uh, from when Ted saw Tony C in spring training. And Ted, I guess, he'd only been retired for a few years at that point, so he, yep. was, he was sticking around the team. And he said something to the effect of, do not let anybody change anything about your swing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> don't, it's, it's, don't let I them mean, do anything to you. I, I tops made a good call because tony c got a 64 rookie card yeah and he yep he, he was only drafted in 60 oh he was signed in 63 one year in the right. minors and he was not expected to make the team that year johnny it's pesky 19, took 19 him because he just he ripped it yeah. up in spring training and a lot of the if you read some articles some of the brass didn't want to bring him along he said i'm bringing the kid up and yeah well, that's Tops. the other thing about Ted. Ted said in 63 that he was still two years away. And yeah. he wasn't. He was less than a year away at that point. So for him to get that card in 64, that's that's pretty good, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the first I, pitch he ever saw in Fenway, he hit out. So That's right. Against, I think it was, was it against the White Sox? I, I believe it was, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, you had his uh, baseball reference page up there. If you look at his stats for 162, it's yep. pretty good for what he, he, he got hurt yeah. quite a bit because he just, he got hit a lot, but. Yeah, grab yeah. the plate. Yeah. Well, here's some good All stuff. Right. So the top left, it looks like the same one that we saw. It is. That, that just yeah. happened to be in the photo and I didn't want to crop it out because okay. I didn't think of a way to do and it. The, um, and the one to the right of that. That's just a, a team flat. issue postcard. That's from early in his career, I believe. Looks yeah, he to looks be. He's pretty young, young, 64, 65, and it's autographed. Um, the bottom is just, it looks like that's from a program. Uh, yeah, it's a cut auto. Sign it. Is that an yeah. SGC slab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the old, old, old original yeah. SGC. And of course, SGC doesn't authenticate autos anymore. But, I mean, I've, I've looked through enough Tony C autos in the last, like, several months to see that yeah. that's pretty pretty cur- clearly clearly he, he actually has a nice autograph it's really nice yep yep yeah. yeah for a tough name to write you know yeah no guys took pride back then signing their names a lot of uh, a lot of letters <laughs> yeah then, yeah all right so is the cup the bottom right what looks like i guess a drink cup yes that's a cup well, you see the photos just above that uh-huh there's one i actually pulled that one out because it's one of my favorite pieces Nice. These are from 1969, and they were put out by Atlantic Richfield Gas Station. It's like a 12-piece set. So if you filled up uh, with gas, you got one of those. You could reach in the box and do it. Was it regional? There was, station in, there was a station in my town. It was one of my dad's best friends. My dad would work there on Saturdays. So I had a set when I was a kid that I had tacked on the wall and taped. It was all beat up. Over the years, I've replaced it. But you could do a mail-in, and they have those cups, and all 12 photos are on that cup. Oh, nice. And there's four different colors. I have them up on the shelf here. You got pink, green, blue, and yellow. And I just happened to I just put the blue one there because I have Tony C facing out. Um, yep, yep. They're tough to find. There's actually a, a Red Sox pitcher, a drinking that you pour lemonade or soda or whatever you had in a plate. Those are unbelievably hard to find. Is it just Red Sox? Is it regional? It was regional. You could find okay. these, like Seattle Pilots have a set. I think uh, the oh. Yankees have one a couple of years later. I think the Twins may have one. They would various times over the late 60s and early 70s at different 
uh, gas stations and ice cream stores and various, you could get them, but this was only put out in the Boston area. And is that your glove? I have, yeah, that's one of my gloves. Yeah. I have two Tony C models. Um, did you use them as a kid or is that something? I didn't use that one as a kid. No. no. Okay. It's, uh, somebody actually sent me that. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. I, I have two of them and that one's actually on a, I have it on the shelf over here. Um, I don't know if that's a McGregor cause that's uh Wilson. Cause the, the other photo is uh, a premium where if you bought a glove, you got a Tony C picture to the left of that. Yes. 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 Yeah. You see where the photo is taken. <laughs> is that Yankee stadium? Yankee stadium. <laughs> hey, I think a lot of them were taken there. Yeah. Well, a lot of the tops photos were taken there, certainly. Yeah, um, they were, for, yeah. For, for like 20 years. Um, and then the, the pennant above that. Um, yeah. Who's the, who's the player That's in the Tony bottom? That's Tony and Billy. That's Tony and Billy. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. Okay. I, yeah. I actually pulled this one out because Billy's on here. He never gets the love. Um, he actually was the Sox number one pick in 65. Yeah. First year of the draft. Yeah, and Billy, he, um, I guess he had a pretty good year the first year he played with his brother, which I guess was 69 or 70. He's, he played. He came up in 69, and then he started in 70. Um, right. I think he hit 18 home runs. Uh, yeah. And he made uh, – he might have made tops uh, all-rookie team. I'm not 100% on that, uh, but – Yeah, the got, Red Sox didn't treat him too well. They traded him, what, to the Brewers, I think? They traded him to the Brewers. He yeah. once his brother got traded, Billy was pretty outspoken right. about it, blaming Yaz for it, blaming Yaz for getting rid of Tony, uh, Ken Harrelson, and a few other guys. Uh, and he they he lasted the season, and then there was like a ten player trade. He was off to the Brewers with Ken Brett and Lon Borg, and we got Hopper and Marty Patton and. Lou Kraus and a few other guys that didn't really matter much. Yeah, Lonborg was in that trade too, I think. Lonborg was in the trade. And Billy ended up playing for the Brewers. Then he went to the A's. I think he might he won a ring with them. And then That's he, he right. got hurt really he, he got hurt really bad and he never never came back. Yeah, I know he um he passed away in the last few years. He did um, pass away. And he he finally came back to Fenway one night where they had a Tony C type deal. And he threw out the first pitch. So, so they must have meant defenses, the new ownership and whatnot. Well, that's good. Yeah. This All is right. a good one. Yeah. All right. So this, I, I, I'll i let you say it, but I, I didn't know what this was at first. And now I think I know what it is. So why don't you tell the viewers what this is? In, in 67, Tony C made the All-Star team. It was, yep. uh, game was in California, I believe. I have the press pin for it back here. Uh but all the players that got invited to the game got a tie tack. Nice. And this is the one that was Tony C's. It was given to him. Wow. And this, is, get this it. is another this is another piece I got from one of his childhood friends that's I got a lot of my stuff from. So I I, I believe it. Um yeah, that's that's one of my better pieces, I think. It's just a oh, cool, cool thing. It I, I when I realized what it what I thought it was, and I actually am I'm, I'm kind of right. It was a a pin given to the player when they got to the All Star game. Yeah, I, imagine I, that. That that's what you got. A little tie clip. <laughs> you got that. Yeah. Well, now it's a whole extravaganza. But back then, it was yeah. just a game. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They, they, yeah. The guys used to go out to dinner beforehand and come together and you know. Yeah. No, that was, that was it was a, know. it was a tough game too. I mean. Yeah, they played yeah. it for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up until the '80s, I think it was still a, it was still played as a serious game. But yeah. so, it, do do you know that there are any of these out there from other players that made it into? Collection? I, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if most of them left the friggin' things there. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Yeah. You know? Well, I guess Tony was a bit of a collector himself, and then his friends, you know, yeah, like bit of a hoarder. Said, I've got a lot of stuff off one guy and that came from yeah. him. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so now we got, uh, I think we only have a couple slides left. So more, more photos. Yeah. Um, yeah. A couple press photos. That's, uh, yeah. 
think that's a that might be a 64 team issue that color there i think the photo with ted is uh tony c and yes that looks like a spring training yeah it is yep 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 that's I think telling the bottom that- the bottom right is uh, possibly that was after you know during his comeback maybe yeah you can 69. see the eye the eye yeah, still yeah. has issues. He said he said quoted um, that he couldn't ever actually completely see out of the eye, and that he used right. to turn his head to a to an angle to be able to yep. see the ball. And I'm thinking to myself, right. this guy put up 36 home runs he, he hit in 1970. Homers, yeah. With with yeah. with half an eye, basically, yeah, and it's it's unbelievable, and then apparently it just continued to degenerate, degenerate yeah, had, to the point yeah, where he when some, he was with the Angels, he couldn't really see at all. Yeah, he had some other health, health issues. I had sent you some other. Fo- I don't know if you actually saved this one to the slide thing. It was uh, it was a bunch of sixty eight cards. I didn't. I couldn't find it. I know you sent it you to could, me, but I think yeah, people so, can look this up. It's a pretty unique yeah. thing. Uh, and I, I can post it on my site later today on Twitter. Um, right. And Keith, Keith Olbermann's the one who did the research on this. But there's a whole bunch of cards put out in 68 tops. And they were taking at Fenway. Uh, and it's believed there's seven or eight of these cards. Uh, there's a couple of Red Sox guys, but there's a lot of Angels cards. Jack Hamilton's one of them. And these were believed to have been taken, the photos, just hours before the game on August 18th. Wow. You can see Fenway in the back. It's the only time they were in there playing this time of day. You can tell. So right. they're all believed to be taken that fateful day on August 18th. And, and Jack Hamilton's one of them. I, I'm, I am always fascinated by the concept that certain photos for baseball cards can be dated. You know, and the action ones are, are pretty easy to do because yeah. a lot of times it's like this is the only time such and such slid into second base in right. you know yankee stadium in 1970 or whatever some so people you can, are really yeah. good at it some yeah. people are so good at it i mean some guys can look at a card and instantly tell you what stadium it was yeah even yeah. if it's some minor league stadium in the middle of nebraska they know where it is i don't i can't do that um but the, some um, of these guys the, are really good the 71 set um has 52 action photos and most of them are taken in either a Yankee stadium or chase uh, Shea stadium, except for one, which is mm-hmm. in um, Philadelphia, what Connie Mack stadium or whatever it's called at that point. Um, yeah. And so I, I've actually started to collect just the, I have the whole set, but now I'm getting high grade examples of just the action photos and researching the games and, you know, baseball references that, one yeah, of the yeah. Sites the, on the internet. The so. funny story about that: a mutual friend of Mark Armour, who I had great friends, he he believes yep. that a lot of the Yankee Stadium photos were taken on a bat day. In he's 70. he's one hundred percent correct. I think and he Mark was there. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. Yep. So that's that's kind of. I think he cool. wrote a piece. He wrote he a, did piece write a piece where he proved it, yes, he and he's one hundred percent correct. Yeah. All of his research checks out. So yeah, it that's does. kind of an well, amazing. I, I wouldn't thing. doubt Mark anyway. Most of his research is 100, percent no matter what he writes. But yeah, you know. yep, no question. Um, yeah, I read that piece, and and that is fascinating to me. I'm fascinated by that. So yeah. getting back to the Tony C game, how is it that they're able to make it that particular? That particular. Well, day? the. I I can reference this. You can find it online if you uh, okay. reference. 68 tops put keith olbermann in a search you can find this there's a whole article about it oh there is okay uh, it's just the time of day where all those players were on the team at that time some of them weren't on the team the year before right that time of day they i think even they even based it on who was on the red sox a couple of photos that you can find in their set from that year right right and he believes it's that day and it if you read the whole thing his info kind of it lays out right it, it checks out yeah it all works yeah. So, so all right. So we're at our, our last slide. Um, the Tony C night. It's in 1983. So he's still around. Yep. Has he had his heart attack yet at this point? I don't believe so. I don't okay. believe so. And I don't know a ton about this night. I wasn't there. I tried to research this. Uh, I I think they might have had a few other guys from the '67 team there as well. And they just kind of made this into a, a Tony C thing with a bunch of his teammates there. I tried to tried to look this up, and 
I, I don't know a ton about it. Uh, right. I remember this going down uh, when I was younger. Oh, actually, I was 83. I was in co- uh, college at that point, but uh, yeah, I didn't go. But it's a cool little poster. Um, like I said, I think it was centered around other guys on the 67 team as well. And they made it more of a Tony C thing. Paul's it's a great it is a great poster i mean it's yeah, just yeah. you know the red really you know and then you it's know, the nice because it's not the, huge so it's easy to display it's not like some of the, the other bush, ones so <laughs> bush beer yeah Spe- I, don't, I didn't even remember college. they were sponsor at fenway but whatever i never would have yeah. drank it <laughs> yeah it was uh it was not good um so june 683 so that means wade boggs would have been uh on the on the team at that point so yeah, yeah. Tony C, Wade Boggs, and actually, no, wasn't Ustremski was still on the team in '83, right? Yeah, Yaz was there. The the one video clip I found, I believe Yaz was there that day. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, because he retired at the end of '83. Yeah, yep. So that's a connection with all the uh, all the Red Sox of that going back to '67 to '75, yeah. and again to the the Boggs yeah. years where they won the division every year. I don't know if they mended fences or what the the extent of their uh, issues were back in the day, but I don't know. Yeah. A lot of stories written. All right, my friend. Good one. I know there's a lot of stuff you could still bring out, and you said you have a ton of uh, ton more, but um, what we did see was quite impressive. So <laughs> thanks again for coming on. Uh, well, Tony you. C, of course, we we could we could talk all day about him, but um, I think it's a service to to baseball history to collect items for you know everybody anybody can pick up Mantle or Aaron or Mays or whatever, but a guy like Tony C, who really means something to a team and a particular area and a group of fans of a certain age, I think it's it's a cool thing to to keep that memory alive. Definitely, definitely. And, and so uh, next week, you mentioned Mark. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not Mark. Matt. Matt. We're going to have Mark a couple weeks from now. But next week, Matt is going to do the Ted Williams show. So, I told Matt uh, yesterday that you couldn't have picked a better guy to do that. So that's good. Oh, that's nice. Good that's nice for you That'd to be say. A good show. As, a, as a big Red Sox collector, I'm sure – we could do a Ted Williams show, but uh, I know you're going to join me a couple of weeks from now with Mark Armour on the Joe Cronin show. So that yeah, should yeah. be another awesome uh, episode. So uh, Matt, viewers, Matt is one of the Matt is one of the only guys that's been in this room. Oh, okay. Matt's been here. Awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, someday, Mark, if I come up, if I come up to a show, open invitation. Yep. I, I want to see the room. We'll have to Hard meet down at Paul's in Newport one day. I'm going to be in Newport. I told Paul I'm going to be in Newport next summer. So yep. um, we already planned it. So, Mark, thank you very much. Viewers, tune in next week. We've got shows coming one after the other now. All guests, all shows like this. Really a great time. So thanks again to, to our guest, Mark. And we'll see you guys next Saturday. Take care. Thank you.